Hey guys, this is Kayla with Becky's Graphic Design in Nashville, Tennessee, and today I will be showing you how I take print files from InDesign and turn them into a digital ebook. First things first, I'm going to look and review the print files for this book and just check over them one more time, make sure everything is good. I always want to make sure I have a final version of the print book before I go on to make the ebook. If there are content edits or other thing that, things that need to be done, uh, make sure you have them finished in the print book before you begin the ebook because then you'll have to do it twice. Okay, I'm happy with this print book. I'm going to go ahead and navigate to where I keep the files for the print book. It's important to keep your ebook and your print book files separated. I'm actually going to go ahead and make a complete copy of this folder here, the interior. I'm going to rename the copy ebook. And we're going to insert here. I'm going to go ahead and delete everything that's not related to the ebook. Now that everything is cleaned up, I'm going to go ahead and open up this InDesign book file. Okay. I'm going to open all of these files at the same time by selecting all of them and then double clicking. Because this is now in a different folder than the original files, there's going to be a couple of issues with missing links. Okay, first things first, let's just try to export this entire thing as an ebook and see how it comes out. I'm going to select everything over here in the book document, hit the hamburger button, and then tell it to export book to EPUB. Okay, I'm going to navigate to the correct folder, and we're going to let it go in here. Now, when you're exporting an ebook, there are two different versions. There is a fixed layout, which basically means it flattens every single page into an image and then displays them as an ebook. For this kind of book, that's not what we want. We want what's called a reflowable ebook. Because this is the kind of ebook where you can change the font size, where you can highlight things out of the text and click on links. This does mean a little extra work for us, but it is much more enjoyable for the reader. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And we're going to see what we get right off the bat. Here we see some errors. I figured there would be a couple of missing links. The program that this is open in is called Kindle Previewer 3. You can download Kindle Previewer 3 uh, by simply searching for it. It's free from Amazon. Um, it's something that they have readily available. Here's where they have the download for that. They have it for uh, for Mac and Windows both. This works for ebooks of all locations, whether you're uploading to Ingram Spark or KDP or Rabutin or Kobo. They all you can check your ebooks uh, using this program here. Okay, as we can see here, we have some funny gigantic text, um, some things flowing together where the table of contents is on the same page as all of this front matter. Um, it looks like, yep, these images have come unglued from the chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. We are retaining some styles like the drop caps and uh, the chapters are breaking. Okay, a couple of things I see here. We're going to go ahead and start editing this. I'm going to close this preview. Back in InDesign here, we're going to go ahead and start changing some things. 
Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is remove the table of contents page. We don't need this at all because these page numbers are not going to be accurate in the ebook. Depending on whatever the reader chooses, their font size, the type of font, um, and just the way that their ebook reader views the book, um, these are going to be entirely inaccurate. So I'm going to go ahead and remove it. The way that the ebook will pull the chapters is from the actual document names over here. So these are going to be the uh, the chapter names in the ebook. I'm going to completely remove this spread. In an ebook, blank pages like this will simply be skipped. They will not be in the book. Earlier, when we previewed this, the front matter had bumped up directly behind the title page information. The reason that this happened is because we did not have a split document style in between them. In an ebook, by default, all that text is just going to go one after the other no matter what, even if it's on separate pages. The only way to eliminate this problem is to have something called a split style. I already have a split style applied to the styles I use for chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. That's why those are already broken up. If we look here, we can see that I have already styled these chapter headings with a style of split tag. I did this beforehand because I knew I would be making an ebook of this document. Might as well save myself some time. But if I want to break this content to its own unique page, I'm going to go ahead and make a style called split style. So let's make a new style here. I'm going to rename this split based on nothing. The only thing you need to have here is this checkbox here, split document. As you'll notice, it says EPUB only. This doesn't affect anything in a print book. Um, the only thing that matters is when you use it in an ebook. I'm going to hit OK. Now I'm going to type a couple of spaces in here and then apply the style of split to those spaces. If we go to export our book again, we will see Oh, and we see here that nothing happened. So I want this to drop to its own page. The reason that didn't happen is because if we look back at our InDesign files, that is because chapter one is the master, the parent style. What we just edited was in the front matter, and therefore it doesn't exist in the rest of the book. If we want that split style, to exist anywhere else, it must remain in chapter one. All I'm going to do is copy this little tiny space area, and I'm going to jump over to chapter one and just drop that in here. Now we should see it in the paragraph styles. I'm going to delete what I added. All right. Now, if we go to export it again, it's still not showing up. The one last thing we need to do is change some export settings. So let's go back and export again. You'll be doing this quite a bit when you export an ebook. You export constantly and constantly. All right. By default, EPUB 2.01 is the one that is um, in this checkbox here. The one we want is EPUB 3.0. We will be choosing an image, not rasterizing the first page. 
Um, I will be grabbing a file that I have pre-done. If you're having trouble finding your artwork, it may be because GIF is the default file name down here. Change that to JPEG and then you might be able to find what you're looking for. Alright, I'm going to open up this file. Now here is that setting we're looking for. We want to split the document and we're going to base it on the paragraph style export tags. Now we can see that the front matter has stayed on its own page away from uh, the cover title information. <clears throat> the next thing that is running into the copyright information is dedication. So we can use the same method to keep the dedication from flowing into the rest of this. I'm going to drop that down in one line on the line above it, add a couple of spaces, and to those spaces I am going to apply the style of split. Alright, so now I'm going to save this, and when we export again, we should have that dedication end up on its own page. And there we are, dedication on its own page. So three things to remember. If your text is flowing all together and you want to separate it, make sure that you have created a split style, that you have the split style in the master or this parent chapter of the book, and that you have the split document checkbox checked in the ebook in the ebook settings. The next thing we are going to fix is these runaway images. These are supposed to be paired at the beginning of each chapter, but now they have flown away into the end of the prior chapter. So in InDesign, we're going to go to chapter one. Typically we can fix this problem by anchoring the image. To do that, we are going to click on this little blue box here at the top of the image and I am now dragging over to the beginning of this word. That is now the anchor point and you can see this little anchor image here. That means it's now anchored. You can change the anchor position by simply clicking and then dragging to wherever you want it to go. I'm going to leave it at the beginning of this word. Now if we export to EPUB, we should see, yes, it has stayed there at the beginning. Okay, I have gone ahead and anchored the images for each chapter. Um, oh, got one more to do. I'm going to anchor this one here. This one may become an issue because I anchored it to a left aligned style. The image might also become left aligned. We will see. I'm going to save everything with control shift alt S. And now we're going to export that EPUB again. All right, scrolling through here now, I see that the introduction Chapter 1, Chapter 2, and it looks like everything else all has retained the little image at the beginning. Now let's go down to about the author. Oh, that still worked out okay. On this page, I see that there is a link. We can make that a live link in this ebook that people can click on. If we go back to InDesign, I'm going to highlight the whole link right click on it and create new hyperlink from URL. Now next time we go to export this book it should be a live link. 
I'm not entirely happy with the way that this page looks. I'm going to use a different style to make it look a little nicer. One of the easiest ways to maintain a good looking cover image is to turn this into an image. I'm going to go to pages here. I see that this is page I. I'm going to export a JPEG. I'm going to save it. I'm going to export this at 150 ppi um, and then go ahead and export it. I'm going to go ahead and delete this stuff here. Now I do need a text box to remain on this page so that I have something to anchor the image to. I want this image to stay centered, so I'm going to type a couple of spaces in here and then let's apply something that is centered. Um, I know that the chapter title is a centered style. I'm now going to place the image. The nice thing about ebooks is that images do not necessarily have to be on the page. Um, they will be fitted sort of automatically. So, you know what, let's just be messy and leave this off to the side. And then we're going to anchor it inside of this text box here. Now, if we go to export, now we have this image. We can zoom in on this by double clicking, but I would like for it to be a little larger. We can change this in the EPUB export settings. I'm gonna go through here and choose some different settings. On this tab, the conversion settings tab, there's a couple of options you can use to make your images bigger. Because I have PNGs in this book and I want to retain their transparency, I'm going to select automatic, but I am going to bump the resolution up to 300. I'm also going to raise the uh, quality to maximum and leave this one at progressive. And let's go ahead and export this now. As we can see, we now have a slightly better resolution. However, this image is pretty small still. One thing I find that really helps, especially with these uh, text-based images, is to crop all of that excess white off the sides, which makes the overall image look bigger in the ebook. This is what I've done with this one. I cropped it in Photoshop, and then when I bring it in to the ebook, now it's a little larger and it looks more like this. I'm noticing over here that we are missing some of our table of contents. I have tried and tried and tried to fix this issue, but the only way I seem to be able to solve it is by bringing all of those documents again into the book file. So let's do that. I'm going to save this book, and then I'm going to remove all of those chapters that are not working. I'm going to hit this minus button to remove them. And I'm going to re-add them by clicking the plus sign. Now, when you re-add your documents, make sure you are adding them from your ebook folder and not from the interior folder. This is my print files. I don't want to mix those up. I'm now going to add chapter 1 through 12. Alrighty, let's save this book again, and now let's see how they come in. There we go. Now, our table of contents is working properly. On the side here, we see front matter, introduction, chapter 1, all the way down to 12, and then about the author at the end. All right, I'm happy with this now. So let's look through here and do a quick overview on this book to make sure everything looks perfect.
As an example, we can come over here and we can change font sizes and the types to see how other readers might be looking at the book. This is part of the fun and the headache of ebook design. It can look however it wants, but it can also look however the reader wants it to look. So it must be designed in a way that works for everybody. We can make the fonts huge, or we can make them itty bitty. And we can see this clickable link here, which does indeed take me to the author's website. Perfect. Visually, this ebook looks fine to me, but in the background of the coding, there may still be some errors. So we're going to use something called Pagina EPUB Checker. This is a free program made by Pagina. Um, you can download it online for free. I'm going to So I'm going to choose my EPUB file. This is another one of those programs that's really cool and free, but has very archaic UI. All right, let's hit open. And it should run that validation automatically here. This little message down here means that we will pass when we go to upload this file to Ingram Spark or to Kindle. Um, I always have these errors here about the missing fonts, but don't worry about those. Those will not cause your final file to fail on Ingram Spark or Kindle. All right, the last thing we got to do is make sure that we have proper metadata in this ebook. This last time, we're going to export it as EPUB and we're going to add all of the proper metadata to it. The metadata is added in this tab here. The identifier is the ISBN. I have a cheat sheet from which I'm going to pull all of this information. I'm going to paste this ISBN. I can type the title into here. If your book happens to have a subtitle, it will also go in this line. The subtitle can just be followed after a colon. The creator is the author in our case. Because we help our authors self-publish, the creator and the publisher both tend to be the author's name. Sometimes the uh, author may have a business through which they want to publish the book, in which case the publisher may become the business. The date is a very important one. You don't necessarily have to have an exact date or month, but the year is required. And it must go first. It's sort of backwards. So we're going to put 2021. And then I know we're going to publish this book in November, so I'm going to put 11. <clears throat> I'm not sure what day we will be publishing the book on, so I'm going to leave the next one blank. If I did have an exact date, I could add it. So it goes year, month, day. I'm going to paste in the book's description. If you want to make things look a little more official, you can paste in that copyright C here in front of the creator's name. This will help distinguish it from the publisher. The right section, I'm going to simply paste in from the book itself. I'm going to go grab that. This I have simply pulled from the front matter of a print book. And then the subject is your keywords. This is something that will help your book get found on the internet using metadata. My author has gone ahead and picked out these keywords already, so I'm going to simply paste those in as well. As you can see, each of these keywords is separated by a semicolon. I don't know if there's a maximum number of uh, tags you could have here, but we usually go for about 20. 
We're going to hit OK, and then this ebook should be ready to go. After one last export, we finally get to see the product. Okay, everything looks good to me. I'm going to scroll through real quick and double check. And I think we're all done here. All right, guys, thank you so much. This has been a tutorial on how to convert your print book files to an ebook in InDesign using Kindle Previewer 3 and EPUB Checker. Thank you very much, guys. I'll see you next time.